Hello. Our homes use about 30% of the UK's energy and our climate change targets require that we reduce um, in the domestic sector uh, a hot water and heating demand to meet the net climate zero targets. Um, what that means is that the red sector there, heating and hot water, needs to either reduce or we need to produce it from uh, renewable sources. Now, to put that in perspective, if we provided the UK's um, energy via solar, we'd need a farm the size of Wales, which passes through the Aberystwyth Arts Centre. That was just for a little bit of fun. Um, <clears throat> so, apologise a little bit for this uh, slide. It's quite complicated, but it, uh, it, it's, the purpose of it is to, is to demonstrate our route to how we can get to a, a net carbon zero home. Um, the, first, the first image shows a typical new house today um, that we're all familiar with. It, um, heating and hot water is provided by gas and, and lighting, etc., from electric. And that's, that's built to standard. Um, the standard doesn't generally produce um, what it says in the design. They usually use about 40% more energy at a uh, new house today than it's supposed to. Now, in 2025, the government has said that um, we will no longer install gas boilers in our homes and we will need, therefore, to move to an all-electric solution. Now, if we move straight to an all-electric solution, as shown in the middle chart, all our heating and hot water comes from electric, that would increase the demand on the electricity grid by about three times. And that's a pretty challenging um, task for, for, for the grid to do. Therefore, the government has said, well, we can install an air source heat pump which is a very efficient way of producing uh, heat energy from, from electricity. For one unit of electricity goes in, you get two of heat out, which is okay, great solution, but it doesn't actually help us get to, well, it helps us get to our, our, our net carbon zero target, but it doesn't get us all the way. So on top of that, we could put solar panels on the roof, they generate electricity, that can go into the house and that can produce heat and, and electricity for use in the home. But still, that solution does not get us down to the net carbon zero. It gets us to about 70%. It also means that we've got some large technologies in there. The SLC pump is an expensive big piece of kit to produce that amount of heat energy. Um, and that's the challenge, is to get that down. Now, we have a similar, similar problem with all our housing stock. 80% of our housing stock is much, more, much less energy efficient than our new houses. Um, if we were to... Um, apply the same model to our Victorian houses, our, our 1960s houses, etc. The load on the grid would instantly go up to about five times, and then we're all going to have electric cars in the future. Each electric car you add on, that's another time. So we could be looking at six or seven times the load on the electricity grid. That is virtually impossible, I would say. Um, therefore, we need another solution. The great news is we have one. Uh, it's called a Passive House. Um, and the main thing about the passive house, it reduces the heating load down there very, very small by producing a very therm thermally um, insulated home. And when we, when we go to that model, our air source heat pump we can still use, but we only need a small one. And we can add on the solar panels, which uh, offset or, or generate our electricity for our other, other needs, our hot water, and it goes into the heating. So a great solution. Um, it brings our heating bills down to our total energy bills down in that scenario of around £70 a year. And it takes us beyond um, our requirements for net carbon zero, which only applies to the, to the heating demand. But it actually almost makes our home um, completely carbon zero, neutral. There's about 5% short there. We could probably improve that by reducing some of our household loads and maybe a bit less water. But any, any surplus electricity goes into the grid. Um, when, when we've got too much, and if we need a bit of electricity, it comes back from the grid. So the, bat the grid acts as a battery rather than actually having batteries in our home, which is a much more environmentally way of managing our electricity. So what are the passive house principles? Um, very simple. In about 25 years ago, a professor, Wolfgang Feist, um, was reading an article that said we're insulating our homes, but they're not getting any more energy efficient. They're still using the same amount of energy. And he, that irritated him as a physicist. So he started to investigate and he came up with the, with a passive house standard. 
Uh, and it's basically five things require good insulation, uh, windows that are triple glazed, and they also manage the heat from the sun. So they allow sun in, in during the winter much more than they allow in the, in the summer by positioning them slightly. The mechanical ventilation and heat recovery provides constant fresh air into the building. Um, but as the air is, is, is left the building, any heat in that air is recovered and goes back into the, into the house. Air tightness. A lot of energy is lost through um, poor air tightness in our buildings. It leaks out through windows and the doors, through the fabric of the building, through other ventilation. Um, and by managing this, we can, we can reduce our energy consumption. And thermal bridging is basically hard points through the fabric of the building, like window sills, door frames, um, and any hard points that brick ties, um, maybe a balcony with a steel beam coming in through the structure, sucks the heat out. Um, so that, that, that's the principles of the pacifiers. Now, in um, for the last 10 years, I've been working with uh, Bournemouth Borough Council, which has been a privilege. And uh, we started improving the social housing by initially putting solar panels on, on their, their buildings to reduce the energy consumption for the energy uh, for the tenants. They got free electricity. And um, about three years ago, we were looking at how we could improve the actual houses. And, and we looked at developing uh, these houses here, which were to the passive house standard. Um, uh, the brief for, for the council really was that we had to build them ourselves. Uh, they needed to have some eco-credentials. Uh, they wanted to address fuel poverty. And they had to be built by their own guys. And um, they had to be the same price as doing a traditional build and be built quicker. <laughs> so they didn't want too much. But my strategy for this was principally to simplify the construction and um, to minimize the number of design elements in, in, in the buildings. So here's a, the foundation system that we used. Um, it only has three elements versus a typical uh, traditional build raft foundation with block and beam, which is about 10 elements, if you're familiar with that. So we have a layer of gravel, a uh, polystyrene layer, and that forms the con concrete slab goes inside there. This um, system saved the cost on the project by about 4% and reduced the time it took to build the foundation section by about 25%. So it did add excellent value. Uh, moving on, we looked at the walls. Um, here we used a thick concrete, uh, thick clay block, sorry, um, which is about 365 mil thick. There's no insulation required on those walls. You literally render the outside and then plaster the inside. Um, there's about two elements saved there compared to a traditional wall, normally in a brick, uh, traditional brick wall, you have three layers. You'll have the outside brick wall, then you'll have the insulation put inside in the cavity, and then you'll have an inside concrete uh, block. Um, this, this block is a much nicer block to work with. Uh, it's sustainable. It comes from clay, and um, it has about uh, half the embodied energy in it compared to a, a, a concrete block as well, no concrete. Here's the insulation in the loft. So we're, so we're on the passive edge principles of the thermal shell again. There's fi 500 mil of just an ordinary mineral wool in the loft. The, this is the mechanical heat and ventilation system. Very simple, constantly brings in fresh air. Three settings on it, high, medium, or low. You don't really need to touch it. Low energy, um, so it just sits away neatly in the cupboard. This is the lounge, just to give you a feel. It's just an ordinary space, a passive house. Nothing particularly unique about it. Um, uh, the air tightness in this building is provided by the plaster, so it's a normal tray that builders are used to using. Um, and this is a view from the rear of the window showing the rear of the building showing the south facing windows, the which manages the heat energy coming in. Um, in the in the winter we'll let more in and in the summer the windows are set slightly back so it limits the amount that gets in there so you don't get overheating, it doesn't get too hot. So cost did we manage to do it? Good news was yes. Um, we built the houses for the same price as a traditional build, give or take. The passive house actually came out a little bit cheaper, but there is a little bit more cost in the fees because passive houses, one of the reasons they work so well is there's a lot more design effort goes into it. Um, so why are people not bu building more? 
Um, and why haven't the builders been building them? They've argued for a long time that they cost more. Um, they don't have the skills to do it. Um, there'd be a lot of upskilling. Up, up um, I kind of challenge that now. We had, this team had never built a house before. Um, we have built our first house um, and we've compared it with, with a traditional one. Uh, which we had the actual details on site from because we, we also built a traditional one and kept all the data. So we had excellent data to compare with. Um, so all the big bills now can go away. They could probably improve that uh, model, get them even cheaper. Um, I can see no reason now why we don't just all build passive houses. So passive house strategy is affordable and it's the only building that will meet our climate change commitments. Spread the word. Thank you very much.